Whether you're looking for help with your studies or just trying to enjoy a night out, these are some of our favorite apps. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. It's Tom here again from Save the Student. And in this video, I'm gonna be going through six of our top picks for the best apps for students. Now, we do actually already have a guide on the website which goes through loads more apps, but don't worry if you've already read it. I've included some in this video which aren't in the guide just to keep things interesting. And stick around till the end because there's one app which could save your life. And of course, don't forget to like and subscribe for loads more stuff like this. Before we get into our list of the six best apps for students, we have checked them all. They should all be available on iPhone and Android. But also, if there are any apps that you you really like that we haven't included drop a comment below and let us know why it should have been in this video so first up on the list we have app block which is an app that allows you to block certain apps uh keywords websites as well plus the notifications from certain apps too which is really really useful for when you're trying to revise or write an essay and this is actually something that i use myself all the time when i'm working particularly on those days where i'm struggling to concentrate and i'm really at risk from mindlessly scrolling through twitter or instagram now we'll start off with quick block which i think is a really really good option for just turning blocking on and off if you don't have a set schedule where you know you're going to need to not be distracted by things on your phone so if we go into the quick block option here you can see there's an option for blocking applications websites and keywords so if we start by looking at applications you can literally block access to any one of your apps so let's say that i want to block access to instagram if i can find it there we go and also tiktok as well because i know that's another one that's going to be at risk of distracting me when i'm trying to work so we'll do those then you go to websites and the really cool thing here is that it picks out the websites that are associated with some of the apps on your phone. So you can see here, Instagram has already been selected, um, but it's got the, you know, the eBay app, the Facebook app, uh, Reddit. These are all apps I have on my phone and it's picked out the websites that are associated with them. So it stops you from kind of using that as a workaround. So I'll select the TikTok app as well. And then if you go to keywords, a really cool option here is that you can block any website which has a certain word in the name of the website. So let's say for instance that there's a football game going on and I know I'm at risk of getting distracted, checking up on the score, seeing what's going on. I can literally whack the word football into this and it will block any website where football is in the title. And then if I select anywhere in URL, it will block any website where the word football appears anywhere in the URL of that website. But then the second way to use app block is to use schedules. And this is really handy if you know that there are certain times of the week or certain times of the day when you're going to need to be a bit more diligent and a bit more kind of careful about whether you're getting distracted on your phone. And then you can choose whether you want to block it by time, location, whether you're on a certain Wi-Fi network, set a usage limit or number of limits on the number of times you can launch the app. Again, just to be quick, I'm going to go for time here. And this is what happens when you try to get into the app. So I click on Instagram straight away. This big thing comes up, blocks me from accessing it. It's really irritating. It's really in the way. And it certainly lets you know that you shouldn't be accessing the app. So it's really, really good at stopping you from getting into those things that are going to kind of distract you from doing your work. Of course, you might be wondering, well, what's to stop you from just turning the blocker off and then accessing the apps as you would do normally? And that is true. There is certainly an element of that. You will still need to have a bit of willpower to stop yourself from doing that. But the one thing it is really good for is stopping you from almost going onto apps on autopilot. Sometimes you'll open your phone, you'll just go onto Instagram without even thinking about it. So having this app there, blocking it, blocking your access to even open it in the first place is really, really helpful. Next up, we have Too Good To Go, which is a really cool app that helps you reduce food waste, but also get restaurant and cafe quality food at a massively reduced price. The way that the app works is that when it's coming to the end of the day and a cafe or a restaurant has a bit of food left that they're not gonna sell, rather than throwing it away, they'll package it all together into what they usually call a surprise bag or a goodie bag. And then what they'll do is they'll sell it to you via Too Good To Go at a hugely reduced price. So what I will say is that I've set my location to be the Houses of Parliament. So there's probably gonna be one or two more places around here than there might be around where you live and um, you can see for instance you've got cafe nero on there uh, you've got greg's on there lola's cupcakes starbucks king's college london's even on there as well crusher on there and you can see in all the cases the cost of whatever you're getting is way way less than what it would normally be if you bought it at a normal time of day now a couple of tips for using too good to go i'd say if you're worried about the quality of the food that you're going to get do look at the ratings on each of the places. So you can see four stars here for this Cafe Nero, 4.5 for this Greg's, but only 3.7 for this Starbucks, which maybe indicates that the type of food you're getting from there either won't be that great or maybe it won't be in the best condition. Another thing to note though, is if you keep finding that you're missing out on getting food from the place that you really want to get it from, do click on that shop and see what it says. So you can see here, for instance, it says nothing today on Cafe Nero, but if you click on it, it says check again at 7.30 tomorrow. So if you find that you're not getting the food from the places that you really, really want to get food from, do that and hopefully at some point you'll have some luck. 
Now, as I say, because it's based on whatever food the cafe or restaurant has left at the end of the day, there isn't really a guarantee on what you'll be getting. But what I can say is that it does quite often tend to be things like sandwiches or pastries or maybe some smoothies too. But if this is something that you're interested in doing, all you need to do is buy the food through the app, turn up in whatever time frame they've asked you to come, and then voila, you have your food. Next up on the list is LastPass, which is a password manager app, which is super, super secure and allows you to store all of your logins in one single place. Kind of annoyingly for this video, the app is actually so secure that it blocks the screen recorder as soon as you try and open LastPass. So you are just gonna have to take my word for it when I explain to you what LastPass actually does. So as I say, I've used the word secure a few times now. Security is a massive selling point of LastPass. It actually uses the same level of encryption as banks and the military to help keep your password safe. In terms of actually getting into the app, you'll need to log in every single time you wanna use it, either using your fingerprint or your master password, which should mean that if you lose your phone or somebody steals it, there's not really any danger of someone suddenly being able to access all of your passwords. It also has a secure password generator where you can give it certain criteria so it doesn't need to have upper or lowercase characters in it doesn't need to have numbers in it doesn't need to have special characters in it but also what length does the password need to be and then it will throw up a super secure password which will then store within LastPass so you never need to remember it yourself but also you won't need to use the same password across every single website ever again. Now where I think LastPass becomes really really handy for student life is the password sharing option so you can elect to share a password from within your account with another LastPass user which I think is really really handy if for example you have a shared Netflix account with your housemates and you want to share the login details with them. There is a paid for version of LastPass that you can sign up for that lets you log in across multiple different devices but then also share individual passwords with more than one LastPass user but I would argue that the free version is probably more than enough for you to be getting on with for now and if you are really keen to try the premium version do at least start with a free 30-day trial which you can sign up for using the link in the description of this video. The next app on the list is Shopium which is a supermarket cashback app and is a really good way to get some or all of the cost back for some of the items in your food shop. So at any given time, there'll be loads and loads of different foods on the app. So you can see at the moment, they've got cereal, they've got more rice, uh, they've got energy drink, pizza, butter, again, some more cereal. But again, if you scroll through, you can see there's different types of cereal. And then if you click through again, you can see that it's not even just one type of shreddies. It's also different boxes, different sizes, uh, cocoa shreddies as well. So there's loads of different variation there. It is worth noting that not every product is available for cashback at every supermarket. So you can see if I click through the Sainsbury's, straight away it cuts out some of the products. So if you do live near a certain supermarket, it's worth checking whether or not they're offering cashback on each individual item that you want to get. Another thing to be wary of is that you are buying the right size of product. So obviously when it comes to things like butter or cereal, you can sometimes get different quantities or different sizes available. So when you do go and you do find a product that you think you want to buy, make sure you use the scanner on the app as I did earlier with this type of Vitalite to make sure that it is actually eligible for cashback. Then once you've bought the item and remember to keep the receipt, is to scan the receipt and the product barcode within the app. And then assuming you've done everything correctly, you'll get your refund in your PayPal account within a few days. And again, if you do want to give Shopium a go, just head to the link in the description of this video where you can sign up to the app. The fifth app on this list is Starling, which is an app-based bank. Now you might be aware that there are a few of them around, but Starling is one of our favorites because at least at the time of recording, it has no fees on overseas spending, Plus, it pays out a decent amount of interest on any in-credit balances. Similar to LastPass, I'm actually not going to include any screen recordings of Starling here, partly because of the security of the app, but also because, as I'm sure you can understand, I don't really want to include any of my personal banking details here. That said, I will still explain why we think it was worth including in this list of the best apps for students, despite the fact that you probably have already heard of it. As you'll know, if you've already watched our guide to the best student bank accounts this year, we do strongly recommend opening a student bank account, but we do also think it's a good idea to have an app-based bank account like Starling on the side. So the reason you're going to want to open and keep your student bank account is A, for the sign up freebie that you get when you open it, but also more importantly for the 0% overdraft that it comes with too. But you're going to want to have that Starling bank account as well so that each week or each month you can transfer a set amount of money to it and use that for your day to day spending. So hopefully you'll be much, much better at keeping on top of your spending, as I say, on a day to day basis. But also you shouldn't accidentally go over however much you budgeted for that week or that month. And so if all of that sounds like a good idea to you and you do want to give Starling a go, just head to the sign up link in the description of this video. And finally, I mentioned at the beginning of this video that the last app on this list could save your life. And that app is your safe. It's 
It's a personal security app, which is designed not only to help you feel safer when you're walking home alone, but also get there safely too. So there are two main features on your safe that you're gonna to wanna to use to feel, but also get home more safely. So you can see again, I've changed my location to the Houses of Parliament, but let's say that for instance, I wanna to go to King's Cross Station. From here, you can select whether or not you're gonna be walking or whether you're gonna be taking a car. And also you can select which contact you want to share your location with, but also how often they'll be updated with your actual location. So that's the follow me feature. But obviously, unfortunately, there is a chance that something could happen in between those updates that your contact is being sent. And if that were to happen, that's when you want to use the SOS button, which I'm not going to use now. I'll press it just for one second. But if you press it for three seconds, what will happen is that your emergency contacts will be sent A, your location, and B, a notification that you require urgent assistance. As with pretty much all of the apps in this list, there is the option to pay for a premium subscription to your safe. And one of the cool features you'll get if you do that is an SOS safe word, which Unlike the SOS button, which admittedly you might not always have the chance to press for three seconds, with this you can activate the SOS setting just by uttering a predetermined safe word that you have chosen. That said, I would still argue that the free version of this app is very, very strong and certainly worthy of a place on this list of the best apps for students. So there you go. Those are some of the very best apps for students. But what do you think of the list? Is there anything that we haven't included that should have been in there? Let us know in the comments below and remember to read the guide on the website, which has loads more apps in it. And don't forget to like and subscribe so you never miss another video.